Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina, USA. Hey friends, will you join me for a moment and try to imagine how incredible you'd feel living the unique and distinct life you were put on this planet to live, doing work you love, with people you love, in places you love, and all the while creating something of real value to others. It's what I call a life of significance, and I can tell you it makes for a very happy life. And so can April James. He's my guest star today, and he's here to share his unique and distinct journey to his life of significance. Hey, Abel, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me today, Matt. Right on. So why don't you get us started by just telling us what you're doing these days to make your mark of significance on the world? Sure. Quite quite a few varied things, but I'd say the, the biggest one probably is the podcast that I've been doing for more than 11 years now called Fat wow. Burning Men, which is a health-based show where I interview thought leaders and fellow health nuts from across the world and ask them about how... Uh, their approach has worked for them and and especially coaching other people toward better health, happy happiness, performance, and optimizing all these different parts of their lives. So so that's been a big thing in uh, in my life and my wife's life as well for more than a decade now. We've been doing a lot of this mm -hmm. together and started off in the blogosphere, followed it yeah. into podcasting, then eventually into video. And along the way, I've had a, a few fun projects in the world of health, like being on a, a TV show and in some documentaries and things like that, many conferences. And that has been a, a really wonderful way to spend the past 10 years and change. But before that, I really got into podcasting because I already had the microphone and the ability to turn knobs as a musician, because I'd been doing that for a almost a couple decades before that even and uh i still continue to play quite a bit of music do a lot of writing uh I've, I've written quite a few books in the world of health and beyond and uh generally speaking i like collaborating with people who are also fellow health nuts and people who are trying to improve not only their own lives but especially the lives of people around them yeah that's great and i think you do quite a lot of um cooking and recipes and I remember I think I did I followed one of your recipes years ago and started making my own bone broth and did yes. that for a couple of years and it was great but yes. just tell, tell people a little bit about your recipes and and why you're doing that absolutely it's old school home cooking simple stuff and finding a way to make real food tasty and fun for people and, and accessible you know when my wife and I got into kind of eating this way years ago one of the deals was she's she's just like okay yeah we can get into this health nut thing and eat healthy food but we've got to have some cookies too and so we <laughs> we worked for many years especially back in the day putting together simple recipes for treats and homemade uh delicious things like chip chicken parmesan or uh mm -hmm. stuffing hamburgers with guacamole and finding ways yeah. to work bacon into eating more veggies and all the rest of it so bone brat like go, looking back at the way that we ate generations ago, the way that our uh, grandparents ate. Real food, yeah. healthy soil, eating nose to tail, not being afraid of real food fats, not being afraid of vegetables yeah. either, <laughs> and not being afraid of having a bit of fun and happiness. Because if you want to be healthy for the rest of your life, you, it doesn't have to be a slog. It's not necessarily the no pain, no gain approach that many of us have been conditioned into. I think if you want to do this forever, you have to have a heck of a lot of a heck of a lot of fun and hopefully the people around you will be having fun by virtue of you engaging in this lifestyle as well no doubt and and when fun has to be a part of it because if it's if it's drudgery you're creating some of the nasty chemicals that you're trying to right. avoid by eating healthy i right. learned that you know, quite a quite a few years ago it's like wait a second you can't get upset about missing a workout because that upsetness is causing bad stuff to happen inside your body and so you've got to figure out a way to do what you love and if you try something i say if you try something and you don't like it if you don't like eating eating um uh, some certain type of food find an alternative mm -hmm. and keep keep trying until your to your your lifestyle is something you enjoy and it's healthy and one of the most interesting things I've found in the past few years getting into health tracking technology and continuous glucose monitoring and that sort of thing is you would expect that our blood sugar would be uh, controlled by the foods that we eat or, or don't eat in mm. some cases, which is true. But another thing that can spike your blood sugar and crash it 
to incredible levels is just getting mad, just getting yeah. angry, getting yeah. an email that you don't like, that fight 100%. or flight response, zoop, zoop, straight up, straight down. Yeah. It's bad news. So there's more going on than just what we're reading for sure. 100%. All right, Abel, let's, let's do a little math and let our friends all around the world get to know you through our happy formula. And you know it, it's really simple, but it's really powerful. It's power plus purpose equals happy. So let's start with power. What are your practices for building up the personal power you need to get things done, whether it's physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, emotionally? In other words, Abel, what do you do on a regular basis to create all the power you need to take really good care of yourself and your loved ones and still have plenty left over to be a giver to others? It's so important to create a little bit of something every day. And so I like to carry around everywhere I go, a little notebook, and I can fill it up with whatever pops into my head. But generally speaking, on a daily basis, there it is right there. Yes, <laughs> generally <sir>. speaking, <laughs> uh, some sort of gratitude, some way of framing yeah. your mind into looking for the good things around you. Because if you don't, life can become a slog, or you can get into that reactive mode. So another really important thing is, especially early in the day, trying to protect yourself from the external distractions, especially on technology, notifications, people who are bugging you trying to get something or, you know, other responsibilities are very important. But what's also important is figuring out why you're here, what you're doing and, and making it clear for yourself when you're going to be delivering on your own promises that day, if that makes sense. So if you want to eat your vegetables that day, then sometimes writing down eat your vegetables and then crossing it out. So I do this even for dinner, like eat dinner tonight, have a big feast. I do that. And then I cross it out. And there's something very, very satisfying about that. But the blank page is so important. And I would also say that that going out into nature or the sunshine, getting a bit of deep breaths in, um, hopefully some movement. I like doing Qigong or Tai Chi type exercises, not every single day, but but many of the days. So working in breath work, movement, a little bit of grounding, some sunshine. If you can do that and and hopefully create something too before you start consuming that day, then you're on the right track to really deliver on your your promises and you've built a bit of momentum. And when things get hard later in the day and these things come zipping out of nowhere and, and try to take you off course, maybe you can have a little more clarity as to why you should stay on the path. And, and generally that happens if you front load the good stuff in the morning and then you just keep yeah. following those wins. Yeah, perfect, perfect. And that that runs into the to my favorite power generating concept called a Kaizen state of mind. And it's this beautiful Japanese idea. And you, you alluded to it, that small incremental improvements add up over time to yield great big results. And Abel, I love it because it's based on mindset, not circumstance. So mm -hmm. Kaizenian life is knowing there's always something I can do better tomorrow than today. And it creates this optimistic, gentle, powerful, continuous uplifting of my life day after day after day. So Abel, how does Kaizenian your life help you increase your personal power to continuously become more so you can continuously give more? I would say I'm I'm very strict about having to play every day. <laughs> yeah, I need to sometimes artificially insert this playfulness into the into the day. Whether it's writing something silly or thinking of funny ideas, goofing off with a friend, but but usually it's some form of uh, playing music on guitar or piano, and uh, that that form of play or creation outside of technology, for the most part, is is what's especially powerful for yeah. what I like to do, especially in days like this where I have back-to-back -back interviews and I'm talking to people and I'm in front of the tech. I like to break it up by having these tiny little pieces where I'm plunking around on the guitar for a little bit, or I'm writing a couple of lines, or I'm going outside and getting some sunshine and thinking for a second, but not letting all of the distractions of modern life get in the way and suck away that, that creativity. So it's finding a way to work in those little playful bits every day playing with the dog out in the green belt in the morning and walking along the creek and just taking that little excuse to be goofy for a couple minutes and um knowing that you don't have to grow out of that as an adult and, and the fact is it's important if you don't that's been very integral i think to keeping me going after all these years and making sure it doesn't become too much of a slog <laughs> Well, I would encourage you to keep it up because I'm now 61. I've got three grandchildren and, and every year I'm going down to Austin, Texas and I'm running around. I'm on playgrounds again and yes. sliding down slides again. And I then I, I go home with the kids and I say, OK, when we wake up next morning, are you guys sore? And they say, no, we're not right. sore, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> but I am. 
<laughs> All right, let's talk about purpose. That's the second element of our happy formula. And Abel, I've discovered, observed that major life transformations or discovery of purpose often come from devastation. Mm. Addiction, abuse, disease, death, disaster, some awful thing strips a life to its core, resulting in this great big change. However, in my book, Turning Inspiration into Action, I share the transformational process that I've used to discover purpose using inspiration. So how about you, Abel? Was there a specific moment or event or crisis or inspiration that revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? In some ways, yeah, but that that purpose can change and it can be more than one thing. But for me, it was uh, when I was just a few years out of college and I had been paying off my loans. And so for the first time in my life, I was not quite up to the point where I was broke, still a little bit below broke. <laughs> but I came home one night, uh, this was about 14 years ago, and uh, I was living also in Austin, Texas. I just moved everything I had there, which wasn't much. But I came home and uh, the entire apartment building was up in flames and I lost all my material possessions and everything oh. that I was working on book wise, music wise, all oh of it, God. even all the gigs that I had planned as a musician, I no longer had an instrument to, to show up. So I didn't have my clothes, didn't have my car. It was, it was kind of an unbelievable situation at the time, but I realized that in following advice that, that didn't work for me too hard around health, um, mostly by trying to restrict, restrict dietary fat too much and avoiding dietary cholesterol and being afraid of food instead of embracing it. Even though I was in my early 20s, I was starting to get fat, feel middle-aged, have all sorts of problems with my physiology uh, ahead of its time and all of that. So after losing everything and stripping all that away, I realized I looked in the mirror, I saw my face was a little puffy, a little round and, and fat, and I had to face the fact quite literally that it, it wasn't working and I had to admit to myself that it wasn't working and then experiment and find a better way and eventually that led to the path of instead of working in st strategy and management consulting and having a big fancy job and whatever um, mm -hmm. when I started working with other people in the world of health eventually coaching them and being a running coach and teaching about nutrition and lifestyle and all the rest of it I started mm -hmm. comparing the the email about you know, from the day job, which is like, we need to have a meeting about the meeting that's coming up. And then we have to right. have a meeting about it, compare it to someone who's completely changed their life, turned it around yeah. by losing 40 pounds in a couple of yeah. months and they're running again. And they want to go rock climbing and all this. And I'm just like, well, whew, let's go to, let's go on this side for a while. Let's, yeah. let's leave the fancy stuff over there. Um, I'm mostly broke, maybe a little bit of buffer <laughs> now. Um, but let's, let's try to make this the thing instead yeah. and follow that. And here we are more than 12 plus years later, it's been a, a podcast, a blog, many books, many TV yeah. projects and all the rest of it. It's It's been very, very interesting, not without its challenges, but definitely worth it. Oh, good for you. And I so I didn't know, I knew about your your pudginess uh, story and you, that's been in public, but I didn't know about the fire. And yeah. How how different would it have been if you, well, two things I want, I want you to tell, talk to our audience about. How different would it have been without the fire Without that completely, I mean, the, that loss of everything. Um, and then what I know a lot of people are dealing with today, you, you get in, you get in a tough situation and it feels overwhelming, like you can never get out of it. And you must have felt that way. I mean, oh, yeah. you just lost everything. Yeah. So talk about how you deal with the overwhelmingness and how how impactful the fire plus the, the diet issue was for yeah. you. Well, it forced me to simplify. And whether we like it or not, the things that are around us remind us of who we are and they kind of store memories for us. And I, I always thought, you know, it's, well, I don't have that much stuff. It can't, that can't really be true. It was totally true. And <laughs> down to the clothes that you wear, the shoes that you pick out, but also, you know, all of, all of the books that had been given to me that, you know, my favorite English teacher back in high school had written a special note about that I hadn't had the time yeah. to read the whole way through that book. And I wondered what mysteries I had lost there, yeah. you know, but when all of that was stripped away and, and uh, I, it was overwhelming at first, but then there was a clarity of simplification where mm -hmm. I realized that, okay, so I was, I was doing a lot and I was working hard and I was moonlighting, doing something else. And I was playing gigs on weekends and some other nights and Maybe it was too much, and with the hustle and bustle of life and all of the cluttered stuff around us, maybe I was distracting myself from my actual health and 
and it had start to crumble without me even realizing it. And that definitely was the case until it was all stripped away. I had to stare myself in the mirror and be like, okay, what's the next project here? Let's make this the project. Let's, let's work on our health. Because if you figure that out early instead of way too late, then hopefully you can avoid some of the serious problems of degenerative disease that a lot of people are struggling with these days. Uh, and so by prioritizing my health and simplifying the rest of the life, uh, just not worrying about buying stuff because I couldn't. I couldn't really replace all that stuff right away. It was not an option. But working on my health, changing my diet, focusing on running again and, and training and all of that really was something that I got excited about. And that clarity of simplifying things was very useful, but not right away. But after that, in the past few years since, I've noticed that it's almost useful to recreate that fire situation. Because we all move. We all move from apartment or house to one, one city to another, one place to another. And we have a chance to downsize. We have a, a chance to declutter and simplify our lives and prioritize things. And so I encourage everyone else to kind of, when that does happen to you, take that opportunity to donate a bunch of your stuff, to, to yep. let go of all of that extra weight and clutter and ask yourself, what is the number one priority for me right now? What will make my life better and the, the lives of people around me better five or 10 years fr from now if I focus on this right now? And for almost anyone at any point in their, uh, in their life, I think health should be close to the top. But for me, I'm not sure that it was. It was a little too early for me until that tragedy hit. And then it became very clear that that was a good path to follow. And if you focus on your health, as long as you're not too obsessed, it'll always serve you. Yeah. Right on. Well, speaking of downsizing, I'm going from a 4,700 square foot house down to a 24 foot van for the next yes. couple of years. And I love it. Uh, we're just getting it started. So there'll be more on that to come. Abel, this has been great so far. Let's take a quick break for our sponsor to spread a little love with our audience. Happy is an intentional and lifelong journey, but it's hard to change and grow towards higher levels of happy without knowing where you're starting from. Our happy quiz puts a starting pin on the map to your happy living and provides additional guidance and motivation along the way. Just go to happyliving.com and take the happy quiz to get started on your road to happy. And we're back and this is the Something Significant Show and I'm your host, Matt Gersper. And my special guest star today is Abel James, and he's one busy man. He's a New York Times bestselling author, a celebrity coach on ABC television, host of the number one most popular health podcast called Fat Burning Man, heard all around the world. He's also the creator of a cooking app called Caveman Feast, a speaker, an entertainer, a consultant, a musician, and a songwriter, and a poet too. So... I love poetry, Abel. Would you care to share a poem with us? I would be happy to. I was trying to think of something that uh, that might be appropriate today because there are a lot of different directions you can go with with poetry. A lot of times when I'm writing something, it's to process a difficult emotion. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's it's to go after something that might have a lesson in it that's a little more positive. So given the uh, the theme of this show, maybe I'll go for that. Unless you'd like to hear one about the fire. Uh, that's it. well we were just talking about the fire give us give us the fire we can maybe i can squeeze both these in since they're they're pretty okay. short so the first Let's one's go. about the fire which is uh, called flames a rocket of flames turned the texas sky pink as our fiery propane line blasted its stink toward horrified neighbors who couldn't even blink we were already on the brink but somehow a former professional fighter predictably pulling another all-nighter spotted the building growing brighter and brighter and clenched his fists tighter and tighter. Then he kicked the doors down one after the other as friends in pajamas cried for pets and their mothers. Firemen and cops found our sisters and brothers while the towering inferno began to smother. Everything we once called our home, leaving us naked, hungry, alone. Our armor already full of gaps and chinks. Who could ever possibly think that it would all go up in flames? That there's no one we can blame that all we have is our name that will never be the same thanks mm. to the flames. But since oh. that's a little bit of a downer, let's, oh, let's go God. with this one. <laughs> Gave me goosebumps. Good stuff. Yeah. Let's hear the next one. Uh, Grandpa, the part-time poet, 
Just moments before he dropped dead, our dear grandpa smiled and said, There's more to this than women and gin. Life isn't something you can win. Someday you'll get gobbled up by worms, so try to live each day on your own terms. Ask yourself, what's my purpose here in this mess of hate and fear? Of course, not everything is as it appears. Most of us don't see through the veneer. Sure, you'll know suffering through your years, but don't worry if fate seems hard to steer. When others speak, always lend your ear and live your dreams before the end grows near. Make peace with the people you hold dear because there is no final frontier. Though from this world we may disappear, remember our love will always be here. Ah, oh, good stuff. I love it. All right, Abel, and I think you're going to love this article that I found on lifescience.com. It's called The Science Behind the Power of Giving. And it says the act of giving itself can be the gateway to discovering your reason for being on the planet. It tells how science supports the idea that giving one's time and talents and treasures is a powerful pathway to discovering purpose and overcoming difficulties and finding fulfillment and meaning in life. So I updated our formula. Power plus purpose plus giving equals really happy. So what do you think, Abel? Has giving your time and your talents and your treasure been a pathway for discovering your purpose and getting past difficulties that you've faced and for bringing real meaning into your life? I would say absolutely, because especially if we just use the the health projects as an example, starting up my own blog and podcast and all the rest of that. I didn't start it to make money. I didn't start it for it to be a vocation mm -hmm. or anything like that. I started it because I was curious and I mm -hmm. wanted to have a project to work on like that. And through sharing the resources for free, sharing what I've learned for free with more and more people around the world, it allowed uh, the podcast and the platform to grow. And as it grew, it offered more opportunities for eventually this to become a vocation and a profession for not only me, but my wife as well. Um, and, and a small team for many years in pursuit of all sorts of different experimental projects. Some of them worked out really well. Some of them were gigantic failures. Yeah. And that's just how it goes. But I'm, I'm really grateful to have the experience of being able to build that out for what felt like back then the right reasons and continues to feel like the right reasons. And as soon as it doesn't, as soon as something kind of feels a little bit off, we can say no, because we're the ones driving this ship anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so, so science actually tells us that giving to others helps bring real meaning to our lives. And I couldn't agree more. I love that feeling that comes from the fourth element of significance. You mentioned it earlier when you said that, that person lost 40 pounds and they're out rock climbing. You know, when you've helped that person, when you're doing work that creates value for others, that's the magic. Mm -hmm. It comes more from giving more, not from getting more. But especially on this, this show, and I've been learning that it's not just giving that's magical. It's what I've been learning is that when you're giving from living in your purpose, mm -hmm. so you've discovered your reason, you're in that purpose, and you're giving from there, that's where the real magic is. So tell us, Abel, how does it feel to be happily living the life that you are meant to live and giving to others through the work you're putting this planet to do? And your friends and family are responding. Your friends and family laugh at your poetry and songs and even your rants or when you're able to help friends and family to cry, often with your music, or when you watch people dance to the music you're playing and see their joy, or when people say, Abel James is one of the most kind and generous people I've ever met, or I love Abel, he's an amazing human being. His voice is the butter I didn't know I was missing in my coffee. His book, The Wild Diet, was a staple for me for many years a wonderful author, podcast host, and entrepreneur, a health pioneer, sincere, passionate, truly inspiring, forward-thinking, open-minded, his depth of knowledge and ability to dive into the depths of the human experience with deep emotion is remarkable. His voice reflects the depth and kindness that is Abel James. He just keeps getting better with age. May he live long and prosper. So Abel, you're clearly making a great big impact on others by finding that magic and giving from living in your purpose. Tell us, how does hearing all that love make you feel? Uh, 
deep joy, especially when you frame it this way compared to scrolling through the comments or the reviews where peppered in there is is hate and thinks that will set off that fight or flight response and make my blood sugar go crazy. <laughs> Hearing the nice ones all in a row is very, very humbling and, and brings does bring a lot of joy. And one thing I think I'll share as well is my podcast in the world of health wouldn't be what it is if I hadn't trained in music and art for all of these years, if I didn't continue, continuously practice the art of listening and the art of creating and improvising. So it's very important that people realize that it's not, I'm not still just kind of working on the side and doing silly little artistic projects. This is actually the core of where all of this comes from. And yeah. for other people living in their purpose, you can do that too. It, just because you're not being directly paid the most for that particular thing that you do doesn't mean it isn't exactly who you are. And it doesn't mean that you have to try to extract monetary value from that thing right. that you're doing. You can find your purpose in multiple ways and hopefully keep a roof, a roof over your head, live with purpose, food on the table, and be able to still do what you love in multiple ways, hopefully more than just one thing that you love. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what, that's what this show is all about finding that magic that's in each of our lives. And it comes from this great big happy circle. It's giving your time and talents and treasures as a pathway for discovering your purpose. And then giving from living in your purpose brings a profound joy to your life. And this is the most important thing to the lives of those around you too. So giving leads to purpose and giving from purpose leads to joy. So to more properly reflect the exponential power of the happy formula, Abel, I'm going to tweak it just a tiny bit more. Power times purpose times giving equals happy to the third power. And that's really, truly, deeply happy. Does that sound about right to you? I like that a lot. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's wrap things up with the lightning round. I love the power of words and the capacity for great quotes to change lives. So I'm going to read a few of my favorites and have you tell us what they mean to you. First thing that comes to mind, Abel, because it's called a lightning round. Here we go. From Judy Mikovits. We are not sick we are contaminated. I would say anyone who goes on the internet is immediately contaminated by what it throws at them. And so, whereas it used to be relatively simple to go throughout our lives, deflecting most of that and the most we're exposed to is maybe billboards or a radio commercial here and there. Now we really need to have our shields up. And if you want to be clear with your intentions and who you are, protect your time and your consciousness, especially in the morning before the day gets away from you. I'm glad you I'm glad you went right for the the emotional impact of information rather than food. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I was thinking food. But yeah. Yeah, you mentioned before, it all the bad stuff does the same thing, right? The emotional or 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 food, if it's bad, it hurts you, it harms you in this in the same way the doctors tell me, anyways. Okay, from John Muir, of all the paths you take in life, make sure a few of them are dirt. Ah. Many of them, hopefully every day, walk on dirt almost every day. Many people are afraid of dirt and being dirty or even being in the outdoors. And I was, uh, I had a survival expert who teaches other people how to survive in the wild uh, on the show a few years ago. And he said one of the first things he likes to do with people, especially the city slickers <laughs> who go out in the woods, is get them to put their hand in the dirt and then just put it right on their forehead, yeah. right on their face. Because once that happens, you are no longer that perfectly showered person and perfection is not your goal anymore. It's being, being yeah. there. And and we're all dirty, whether we like it or not. So <laughs> try to have some fun with that. Love it. From Joan Jett, my guitar is not a thing. It's an extension of myself. It is who I am. That is best case scenario. It takes a while to get there, though. You know, a lot of people want to learn how to play an instrument, and it does not typically provide immediate rewards to most people in terms of feeling free. But I can absolutely relate to that on uh, on the guitar. After playing for a few years and really putting in some disciplined practice, I felt this thing flow, freedom. I don't know what it is, but it's when you forget yourself and you're just flying. You're just in the moment and it works but as i've learned um piano later in life as an adult it took a few years for me to get there and i still struggle sometimes where i'm free yeah. and then i'm not and then i'm free and then i'm not and so make sure that 
in pursuit of that freedom, you also put in the discipline in order to get there because that's what it takes. And then once you've done that, it, it's kind of like riding a bike where it's there now. Yeah, yeah, nice. From Lao Tzu, if I keep from imposing on people, they become themselves. I like asking questions a lot more than telling people what to do because telling people what to do is not very effective no matter who's doing it but asking questions and getting other people to consider their own point of view and where they want to go can be magnificently helpful and asking your your own self questions like that instead of why am i so down you can ask yourself why is this so easy instead and it completely reframes your whole yeah. approach to the day so be careful about the questions you're asking yourself yeah <laughs> Read from Witter Biner. Be concerned not with obedience, but with benefit. And you are at the core of living. There are a lot of people who will tell you what to do that don't have your best interest in mind. So make sure that whatever you're doing, you're questioning yourself and you're questioning your path, checking in and, uh, and kind of asking that question, is this serving the world around me? Is this serving me? Am I following the right advice? Am I doing the right thing? And oftentimes the, the answer will be yes, but every once in a while, the answer will be no. And you'll be forced to leave your job, to move house, move to a new city or, or make some major life change. So don't, when that time beckons and it will for all of us, don't be afraid of making that change. That's how we move forward. Walk through the door right on. Okay. This is our show anchor from Goth. Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. I love that because there are a lot of things that people are always say that they want to do. The, mm. the drummer who always wanted to go on tour, the people who, uh, you know, always wanted to be on uh, the field playing pro sports. And very few people actually begin that and carry forward to that ultimate step where they're playing in that game. But all of them, we can't forget, were beginners at some point. Yep. Michael Jordan, when he first started, was terrible at basketball. So we're all there at the beginning. And if you commit to it and you decide that that is the path that you want to stay on, then you have to give up the other things that you started, That's whatever it. isn't going to suit you. And even if it is, you have to let some of the things go in order to follow the path that is truly for you. And don't be afraid of that either. 100%. Okay, now, folks, it's your chance to be a giver, too. If you can hear my voice and you were inspired, inspired by today's show with Abel James, please share some love with our amazing broadcast team by giving what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Abel, I love the unique and inspired life that you've carved out as a crusader for health and quality of life. And I admire your mission to instill in people the world over the belief that they can reclaim their health with real food, cutting edge science, and primal workouts, and how you show them the way by sharing the best practices that, that are working for you. And I'm super happy that you've shared your fat burning enthusiasm and love for life on our show today. Will you please take a minute or two and share any parting remarks you'd like to leave with our audience? Sure. I would encourage everyone to be a little bit more of who you are. In the world out there, we're all, especially on social media, being uh, pulled down this, this path of being a little bit more like everybody else or changing who we are or hiding a little piece of who we are. But I would argue that it's even better to double down on that strangeness, the, <laughs> the eccentric parts of you and all of the other pieces that stick out and make you different. Perhaps that's the only weapon we have against the AI robots that are coming for our jobs and coming for our happiness and well-being. Maybe it'll be a good thing. Maybe it won't. But I think it'll be best for us if we all be a little bit more who we are instead of more like everyone else when you find that authentic you your life gets easier doesn't it well usually not without its challenges certainly it's not... having your own opinion can be challenging sometimes but it's worth it yeah yeah agreed all right and i also want so thank you very much abel and i also want to thank witv7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guest stars like Abel James, and reaching folks just like you, ready to create your own extraordinary lives. And most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites, 
and social media and all things Abel James. Find him, friend him, buy his books and his wild superfoods we didn't get a chance to talk about and subscribe to his podcast too. It's all there to help you optimize your health and reach your ultimate potential by becoming your own health guru. Just go to fatburningman.com and ablejames.com and wildsuperfoods.com. All of them are all one word. One more time, that's fatburningman.com, ablejames.com, and wildsuperfoods.com. From me to you, dear friends, I love you, and I want you to be really, truly, deeply happy too. So I want you to go to happyliving.com and take our happy quiz, because when you measure your happy, you'll focus attention on it, and focusing attention on it inspires change and learning and improvement all to flow right into your life. And once you take the quiz, and it only takes a minute, then I hope you'll give some thought about what we can do together, you and me, to improve the happy of your world, one person at a time. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is the Something Significant Show. And we're out. Life weighs me down with complication. Heavy trouble. I can't carry very far So I set my worries down And find salvation At that old back door Backstreet smoky bar When I just need some sanctuary When that cold, cruel world Is knocked me to my knees Then you'll know just where you'll find me I'll be right here singing songs of sweet relief And I thank God for the blues To heal my soul and set me free Now sing it with me if your heart's been blue Thank God for the blue. So I flip the lash on that dusty, musty case. Raise that ragged lid and smell the air. Slide my fingers up those trusty, rusty strings. Let that old guitar cry my tears.